storm to continue to work through. There's a live look at first alert Doppler and our satellite picture. You can see a well defined eye showing up on this system as it drips off to the north. Uh, right there is the eye of it. Let's get the latest 11 o'clock update from the National Hurricane Center. Maximum sustained winds at 110. Gusts going 130, north wind at 12 miles an hour. Looking at the path of the storm system, you can see by Wednesday, by tomorrow, between 8 and lunchtime, it should come ashore somewhere in the panhandle of Florida, and then it pulls off to the north and to the east. It will weaken to a Category 1, but it is going to slow down as it gets on the land. And then a front comes in and interacts with it and ejects it quickly out to sea. You'll notice that Thursday morning, 8 a.m., it's still in Georgia somewhere. And then it passes across us on Thursday and by Friday morning it is out to sea and a memory for us and then it goes up into the North Atlantic and dies out. We'll look at a couple of the rainfall models. Now remember a model is a tool like when you build a house you need a hammer, you need a saw, you need a screwdriver. Well this is one of the tools we look at to build a forecast. So this is not the forecast. But I'd want to show this because look at the axis of the heaviest rainfall. This bright pink area is down east in the European model. Now watch where the bright pink area is in the American model. It's all the way to the north and to the west. So there's a big difference as to where this heavy rain might fall. The models still aren't agreement yet. So what the National Weather Service's Weather Prediction Center did, they took kind of a blend of the different models and what they think is going to happen and put this three to four inch swath right through the triangle and western sand hills and it extends out towards Charlotte and then one to three inches on down and east. That's good news for the folks down south. Unfortunately for us, if we get three inches of rain on Thursday, we could see localized flooding with that ground already saturated. So that's one thing we're watching. The other thing we're watching wind. Flooding, if we look at the risk with this hurricane, you'll notice elevated risk for flooding. I think it's a little higher than anything else right now. We do have a, a limited risk for damaging wind or even an isolated tornado. Depending on the path of that storm, if it goes more to the west, then we kind of get in the sector that would be more conducive to forming a tornado. If it goes down to the east and that right side stays away from us, that might knock down the tornado threat a little bit. But even with that, this gusty wind that will push through, Power outages. I do think we will see some power outages as this system pushes in. Now, as far as the timing of the winds, Thursday morning, 8 a.m., they're approaching us, and I think through the day on Thursday, that's when we'll see 39-plus mile-an-hour winds, highest chance for seeing those winds down east. And